of particular interest was whether or not the supposed blood stains on the shroud were, in fact, blood. A popular theory was that the shroud was just a clever painting. These scientists had the knowledge and the equipment to prove or disprove this idea once and for all. I thought of it as a piece of evidence, almost like a, a forensic uh, a crime scene. Vern Miller was the official science photographer for the investigation team. His area of expertise, fluorescent photography, would prove crucial to the team's findings. We did spectral work, radiated the shroud with all different energy levels and recorded that on X-ray fluorescent film that gave us a very precise indication of the chemistry on the shroud. There were some surprises when the X-ray fluorescent photography of the presumed bloodstains was analyzed. Sam Pellicori was one of the investigators working with Vern Miller. It was found that around some blood areas uh, there is a fluorescent ring. That fluorescent ring is, behaves the same way as the serum of, of whole blood. In other words, the serum separates out from the whole blood, leaving the solid products and then leaving a ring of serum. It was very easy then to confirm with whole blood that you could spin the blood in a centrifuge and separate the cells from the, the serum. And the serum fluoresced very brightly, and the cells, of course, did not. To further confirm the presence of blood, the team also subjected the shroud to photomicroscopy. The blood areas you could see in crustaceans, like crystallization, uh, solid material caught in the threads. We concluded that the apparent blood stains were really blood. There was considerable excitement when the 1978 investigative team released data that seemed to confirm the presence of blood on the shroud. Then, in 1988, blood samples were secretly lifted from the shroud by Giovanni Rigi di Numana with the thought that they would eventually be tested. Then we took two to three small samples of blood from the occipital area. And this was in line with the proposal from 1978. In October 1994, Dr. Victor Tryon began DNA testing on those very blood samples at his lab in Texas. That blood was present on the shroud was generally accepted. Whether or not it was human blood was still in debate. Dr. Tryon would answer that question. I received two samples. The question we would try to answer was, is human DNA present on the sample? The answer to that question is yes. Both samples gave us a signal for a fragment of the human beta globin gene. The beta globin gene is a sequence of DNA that encodes for a human blood protein. The next question is, whose DNA? Is it somebody from this century? Is it somebody from last century? Or is it somebody from 20 centuries ago? Dr. Tryon found very degraded DNA. While Tryon doesn't say that this proves it is ancient DNA, he will say that it is consistent with that supposition. The next question that was asked was, is it male DNA or female DNA? Tryon found both X and Y chromosomes. To him, this meant that the blood fragments he tested came from a male sample. There is no doubt that the sample we tested is a male sample. The results of these tests touched off an instant controversy. Cardinal Saldarini of Turin is the official keeper of the shroud. He did not authorize the testing and was not pleased that it was done. I am the custodian of the shroud. The samples, I cannot say that they are those of the shroud. Who gave it to them? I mean, I assumed that the samples were brought to us by uh, what was represented to me to be a representative of the Vatican, the owner of the shroud. Who gave it to them? From what fabric were they taken? I didn't give anyone the responsibility. So as the custodian, I cannot recognize the test. They were not improvised. They were done in the presence of official caretakers. The debate over the blood samples raises perhaps an even more important question. Can any sample that's tested be confirmed as belonging to the man of the shroud? 
Over the centuries, thousands of people have left their DNA on the shroud by touching it, kissing it, and caring for it. Because the shroud is contaminated with so many people's DNA, the DNA doctor try and identify it may not have been from the actual person who left the bloodstain. Scientific consensus is that at least 12 different samples taken from various bloodstained areas on the shroud would have to be tested to confirm that the DNA truly belongs to the man wrapped in the cloth. <laughs>